Hello folks and welcome back yet again to the Tesla project and in today's episode we're going to mix water with electricity uh, using some bits that we bought from eBay so yeah don't try this at home but let's see what we've got going on so <clears throat> when you last le left us we had this uh, Tesla large drive unit running quite well uh, the exception was we did not have any data on the current sensors and as to how they work and what their temperature versus resistance curves would be like so that we could modify the, so the software on our, our open source logic board to interpret those sensors cor correctly. Now, what did happen is I got an anonymous tip uh, for a very nice chap that uh, has asked to remain strangely enough anonymous uh, as to the temperature resistance curves for the internal sensors uh, that are buried inside the motor winding so that's brilliant so we do have that set up but the problem is we, st we don't have any data for the sensors used for the IGBT heat sinks or the ones used for the case of the motor. So, you know, probably kind of oil temperature sensors, that kind of thing. So how do we figure that out? Well, hate multimeters have turned themselves off. Anyway, what you're going to see here is you're going to see two multimeters uh, set up to read resistance. The one on the left is reading 82.6K, which is connected to one of the IGBT heatsink temperature sensors. And the one on the right is connected to one of the motor temper uh, case temperature sensors and is reading 17.4K. We have a dual thermocouple meter. Uh, one of its thermocouples is connected to the IGBT heatsink. And the second one, you probably can't see it too well, is wedged up against the sensor. Uh, for which we're measuring this resistance, the case sensor. So are both of our sensors reading about 13.4 degrees centigrade at the minute. But what is that whining sound I hear you say? Well, as you can see, we have some hoses uh, connect connected up to our drive unit. And we have a bucket. And in the bucket, we have a little 12 volt um, eBay pump. It's one of these little submersible pumps and I'm running it here from a, just a power supply set to about 12 volts. And what that's doing now is, is it's circulating a very weak antifreeze mix just basically comes out through this tube, goes in here, goes through the inverter, goes through the motor and comes back out through this hose here and just comes back into the bucket. You probably won't be able to see it moving too well in there, but it's got a good bit of fluid uh, going ar around. So, this means that we can basically pump uh, water basically through the coolant loop of our Tesla drive unit. So, what do we do? Because we've, we've I mean, we've just got got ambient temperature. So, eBay to the rescue again, or it's either that or it's going to kill me. And sitting in here. Just got it set up here as a little 500 watt heating element. So uh, it's mains powered. I've got it on a plug here, and I'm going to just plug this guy in. And we're going to see, hopefully, we're going to be able to warm the coolant in here, which will then warm the motor, uh, which will then cause our temperature sensors to change value. We'll be able to track the value that they're actually reading. And on the laptop here, uh, compile a um, you know compile a spreadsheet, and be able to plug that into our software and read the temperature sensors. So I've not tried this heating element thing before. It does no earth connection, uh, so I'm not going to be touching it once I plug it in. So let's plug it in. Okay, it's now plugged in. It's either dead, working, or about to fail. Um, so, 
I will come back. Oh, the temperature is dropping, strangely. <laughs> Maybe it's a cooling element. Okay, anyway, um, we will come back when we have some different values. So do stay w w with us because something bad could happen and that would increase my viewership. Okay, yeah, so we, uh, we had a bit of a problem with that heater. Turned out it just didn't really have enough punch. So it'll show you what we did. Uh, I took this, uh, you probably can't really see it, but it's in the, in the bucket there. Um, it's a element from a, uh, uh, what is it from? An electric cooker. So I've got that buried in there. Got it connected to a high voltage DC battery pumping about 380 volts in, in there. And uh, things are warming up uh, quite nicely for me here now. And uh, we should be able to get the data points that we need. Ooh, okay. That's scary. Um, but yeah, those NTCs are dropping. Those temperatures are increasing. My heart rate is also increasing. We're drawing 13 and a half amps at about 370 volts. I can draw about a foot long arc from that terminal, which is really cool. And um, yeah, so stay with us while we get some more data points. Safety first, folks. All right, so I'm not dead yet, and uh, things are warming up very nicely. We're going to continue probably up to about 60 degrees centigrade and uh, stop there. We've got some steam coming out of the bucket. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to disconnecting that is going to be a ball of wax. But the good news is we're getting the temperature up there and we're filling out our spreadsheet quite nicely. So, oh, here comes another data point. Got to go. Alrighty, folks, we did it. We managed to get up to 60 degrees centigrade on the heatsink and 48 degrees centigrade on the motor case before our little um, eBay pump decided to start making strange sounds and that's where I decided to stop the test. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to dump out the water here, tidy up and I'm going to put a bucket of cold water through it just to chill things back down. and. Um, or maybe not. Maybe just let everything everything cool cool off. Um, so yeah, probably you know not the best way to have to have done this, but we got there and we got the uh, temperature data for our unknown sensors. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this particularly scary episode. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you would like to support me financially with these and, and upcoming projects, uh, see the link in the description to my Patreon and uh, PayPal donation addresses. And also link in the description to the GitHub page uh, where you can find all of the design files and info uh, that I have so far found out about these Tesla drive units. So, uh, that's it folks. I'm going to clean up the mess and we will see you next time and um, happy high voltage DC water heating. <laughs>